All right, yo, what's up, guys? This is Joe Crush, and I'm recording live on Twitch again for a YouTube video. And um, today, it's a want to make a video just going about the basics of Jack Eight. A lot of people are getting new into the game, um, and they've been asking me just like you know ba very simple basic stuff. So that's what I wanted to show you today overall. So first, I'm gonna start off with basic pokes. Okay. And then for the list, I'm just going to start um, going down the list about some of the core ones. In total, for all the basic pokes, I have 20 moves. And uh, first, we're going to start off with highs because it's the shortest. And for highs, we have uh, two jab and side step two. So first, we're going to start with two. Two by itself. Um... Two is really, really good. Plus one, 11 frames. It is a jack specialty that his jab is not 10, it's 11. And um, this is one of the main pokes that he has. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of highs, but this really covers all your bases. Um, it tracks pretty well to his weak side when they step left. Um, and then not only that, you have tons and tons of options to extend it. You got 2-1, a quick high mid check. Plus two, um, on block, minus three. Um, decent damage, just nothing too crazy. It's just something that you, it's a good poke that you throw out. Then you can make it even more damaging with 2-3. Two, 2-3 three. Two, three does 28 damage, plus 5 um, on hits, but it is punishable on block, minus 13. So be wary about throwing that one out. Um, you mainly just want to like be throwing out at a time you think they're going to mash on the second hit. So you can get this counter hit follow-up, where I did a bad follow-up. Because that's the, one of the best things about this 2-3 poke, is that you get that counter hit follow-up, it does so much damage. And look at the range, peep the range by the way. Pardon me? I can't do 444. I'm getting the YouTube curse. 444. Anyways, you get the picture. I'm about to do something easier. Let's do shoulder. There you go. That's decent. So you get follow ups like that. And then even more, you can extend it with 212 and 211 plus 2. Now, these new additions are super fire. 211 plus 2 is really good um, catching people with pressing because it's safe. It's minus 4. And the damage you get on it is insane. You get a guaranteed uh, follow-up, if you're quick enough. Oh, hold on now. Oh, maybe you don't get a guaranteed follow-up. Oh, you learned something while laughing. Could have sworn I've been hitting people with this all day. Let's try again. Oh, uh, well. Maybe at the wall you get something guaranteed, but uh, I put it on block on he's blocking it. But then, you know, um, that's a high. And then you throw out the 2 1 2 in case they start ducking after that. 2 1 2 is minus 12, though. But it gives a whole launch. So the reward is pretty huge. You can get something like this, you know. So that covers it for the highs. We got two. And you, I'm not going to put all the strings. It's going to cover up the screen too much. But um, you got, you know, 2 1, 2 3, 2 1, 1 plus 2, 2 1 2. Um, and then also, of course, mainly just want to use 2 by itself. This is just to mix it up. And then for the next high, we're going to add, this is a, now he doesn't have too many highs, but this is the only high I could think of that was like really good for poking. You just throw out with Jack. And that would be sidestep 2. Sidestep 2 is really, really good in this game. Um, it does chip on damage. On block, 6 chip. You get hella follow-ups. You can even get the blue upper here really easily. Oop, I say that, it's messed it up. Get the blue upper really easy, 48 damage, just humongous damage. Uh, plus frames on block, plus 9. That is huge, plus 9. And not only that, this move, you set it up into Gamma Howl, and then, you know, the Gamma Howl mix-ups are endless. Um, one of my favorite things to do with this move is just really annoy them with the highs. I do double chip. How much that that does? Six into nine. That's 15 points of chip, like, really quick, just for hitting them with highs. And you say plus as well. So that's my second favorite poke. You know, Unrivaled, head pie, what's going on, guys? Nice to see you in chat. So that's it. All I have for highs. Um, after that, we're going to go into the mids, and this is the longest portion of the pokes, because Jack just has a plethora of mids that you would want to use. And I'm looking at my notes here, and we're going to start off with the basic ones. We're going to start off with down forward one. Down forward one, one of his OG mids. Uh, nice low hitbox, it's like a low gut punch. Really good range, Jack just has great range. Um, plus three on hit, minus four on block. Nothing too crazy on its own, which is a solid mid poke, it is 14 frames, so a tad bit slow. But instead of it being, you know, a common 13 frame poke, you make up for it with the extensions. 
on counter hit, if you do counter hit down one to one, you get a whole launch. That becomes natural. And you can get a mini combo. Not even necessarily mini combo, but just a pretty good damage combo. This is my staple for it. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, and then also, you know, if they want to duck or they are still pressing on the second hit, you could hit them with this move. And that'll counter hit for a whole launch. Whoops, let me go into the middle of the screen. So you have a bunch of options to catch them pressing after the down forward one. You could catch them with this. You could catch them with that. This one is minus 11 now, though. They buffed it. They nerfed it from minus 10 to 11. So, you know, the extensions are unsafe because these are duckable and punishable. And the other one mid is minus 11. So just be careful when you're throwing out the extensions after down forward one. But after that, we have forward one. Now forward one is one of his goaded mids. Um, it's the same frames. Uh, it's still 14. There's one more point of damage at 13. But the main thing you will, I like about this move is the tracking. It is a pseudo tracking move. So this is a move you're going to be wanting to spam super, super hard. It'll track him to the left, it'll track him to the right. It hardly ever gets sidestepped. And it's 14 frames. Plus 5 on hit, minus 6 on block. So it's kind of, you know, just a solid poke. You throw it singly. And then it has a new uh, extension, a crazy extension. Uh, forward 1-1. One, one, and it's natural. 38 damage. Super mega damage. So at 14 frames, this is a natural combo. So you could use it as a punisher. Um, and also just again, like, you know, try to catch them pressing after the first hit. You know, it is a bit risky because it's high, but sometimes it can happen. You'll counter hit them. So forward one, also really, really good. And then next, after that, on my list, I got forward forward one. Now, I know it got nerfed. Forward forward one, jackhammer. But it's still pretty good. Um, I'm going to tell you why right now. Forward forward one, still really good. Uh, still quick, 15 frames, plus eight on hit, plus six on block, minus six on block. The pushback's really great. And it's really good throwing it out solo. Because you can still just fish for blue upper. I mean, that does more damage than it ever did in 7, you know? Look at that damage. When you throw it out solo. But um, it, you can play some mind games off it. Where you could act like if you want to act. You, you could see if you want to go into Gamma Hell or not. You know? Uh, it would encourage them to press on you after forward forward 1. Because usually the pushback after this is pretty great. Like 2 jab, forward forward 1. Look at the pushback. Like, they don't want to press after that, right? But you can kind of force them by doing maybe the guard break. By doing a plus frame mid. Or you could, you know, and then you could bait them with the high uh, interrupts. Or you could counter them with the bubble burst when they're trying to mash on you. So there's plenty of things you could do after forward forward one, even if it's on block. And let alone on hit, you just get guaranteed mixes. So I would say forward forward one is still really good considering on counter hit, you still get follow ups. And on hit, on block, you could just play around with the game of house stance immediately right after. Still really good. Then after that, we have. Back 4-4. Now, this is a new extension. New, um, not new, uh, string, but it's just new properties. They buffed it. Oh, that's, we can do back 4-4. Um, yeah, let's put it like that. So, back 4-4, they buffed it to being 13 frames. Check the frames right there on the bottom of the screen. 13. That's insane. I mean, he's never had a 13 frame before. And mostly he had the 12 frame, the down back 4, down forward 4 and 7. But in this game... Um, he doesn't have that anymore, so it's really nice that they gave him something as a really, really quick mid. Not 12, but 13, I'll take it, you know? And it's a knee. It's really reminiscent of Claudio's back 3-3, except it's just not as good. Um, and here, I'll show you why. Because on block, it's minus 13 solo. Minus 13, that's not really good. Um, on hit as well, it's minus 2. So it's really not the greatest on hit solo. But I think with this move, you're not going to really want to throw it out solo too much. Um, because the second hit is safe. So you, you don't want to finish it here because you'll be punishable. You want to finish it on second hit pretty much always. It's uninterruptible. Another mid. Puts him in crouch at minus 4. That's a much better position than standing plus 13. And also on counter hit, it's a little mini combo. So you get a 13 frame uh, knee mid little counter hit mini combo. Leaves him right in front of your face for Oki. You know, you can do whatever you want. And furthermore, this breaks the floor. So on any uh, stage with like floor gimmicks, like you can break the floor or do a floor bounce, this will do it. You know what I'm saying? At least I know for sure uh, floor break. So on certain stages, this strength becomes super, super good. So just keep that in mind as a jack main. Throw out that back 4-4, especially on floor break stages. 
Back for four. Yeah, we should do better at that. And then next we got on the mids, we got uh down forward four. Now this is a new mid. A little bit on the slower side at 15 frames. But it's really, really good. On hit, plus five, 17 damage. On block, minus nine. So you completely lose your turn here. Um, so I would say that uh, it's definitely a move you don't want to mash after or do too much after on block. Uh, it's kind of just a singular poke you throw out. And the reason why you're throwing it out is to fish for the counter hit. Because um, the counter hit properties on this are amazing. Plus 14, it says that on the frame advantage. And what that means is that you can get back one plus two on counter hit. So this turns into a heat engager, a pseudo heat engager on counter hit. Oops, I dropped it there. And um, so it's just really good to activate heat. You know, you go into running one plus two, go into heat stance, yada yada, you do some nice stuff like that. All off of a safe mid that has really, really good tracking. I would just be wary of the semi-slow startup at 15. Say you do it like after a jab into it, you have potential to get counter hit. There's uh, like four frames for, so they could interrupt. So I uh, just place it pretty well. Um, I think it's fair and balanced because the reward is super great. And also, like I said, plus 14. So at a wall, here, let me go to a wall break. Restart settings. I already posted some clips of this, but this turns into natural combo with forward one, one. And you can get some crazy damage like that. Look at the half-life. Half-life from the wall. So this move is super amazing. Off a counter hit, you could potentially get half-life at the wall. Natural combo. So definitely, Jack Main starts to use this new move. I want to see y'all throwing it out. Getting the heat engager in neutral. And at the wall, getting half-life. And so after that, we have 4-3. Now 4-3, this one is officially goaded. Um... It is his fastest gamma, gamma Howl move engager. Um, it's 15 frames as well. But when he goes into Gamma Howl, he just moves really, really fast. And so uh, you're able to just really, really spam um, this move a lot. Uh, pretty good tracking to his right. I don't know if I could really get stepped with the left, but I mean, this move has decent tracking, especially to the when they move to the right. It's a knee as well. Um, of course, you can move into Gamma Howl. And one of my favorite properties of this move is on counter hit, Gamma Hell forward 4 becomes natural. Another great counter hit tool. He has tons of great 15 frame counter hit tools. You don't have to just rely on 4 forward 1. You could do this. You have to be wary because it is a high inductable. But a lot of times, you'll kind of just see that first hit or just be already spamming it and land this. So it's really, really good. It also even turns into a launcher with heat. Like, look how crazy that is. If I'm in heat and I can't counter it 4 3. Just a whole launcher. I mean, this is like not even optimized combo, but you, you can see the picture. Like, so, so, so good. Um, also, I remember Moy Il telling me there was some secret tech with solo forward three on counter hit. He said you can get like a. It's plus five on hits. He was saying you can get like Raw Rising four. I'm not too sure though. You can at least get Gamma Hall four. I know that. That's really, really nice. Um, and then also it has extensions. These extensions are very, very crucial to using the string and to Gamma Hell. Because he has a safe high, that wall splats. It's also a natural combo. So you can throw this out by itself. 4 3 2. Just be wary of getting ducked as usual, you know. But at a wall, you can throw this. At least to potentially create damage. And then this, probably like the best extension is the 4 3 1 plus 2. It's not natural, which seems like it might be bad. It's also minus 11. But I mean, it'll be broken if it's natural because. The way you're supposed to use this extension is to catch them trying to mash on your Gamma Howl entrance, you know. You want to make them want to press, like right here. And then set up this. 4, 3, 1 plus 2. You get some kind of, you get a whole launch on counter hit. This is my favorite combo, side step right. Always using 4. Let me see if I can hit it. Uh, well, you know, you get the combo. You get a whole launcher there. Um, on natural hits, a regular hit. You get a little bit of Oki with like down two. I think back three might be guaranteed actually. So 22 plus 11, 33 damage, non-counter hit, just as straight duck. So that's pretty, pretty good. Um, so yeah, back three, I mean forward three. Keep that in mind. It's one of your, gonna be your, your, one of your best mids to use in uh, neutral. All right, now forward three, we got after that, 
Um, oh, one of the new other best ones. Wall standing 2-4. Wall standing 2-4. It's from crouching. 10 frames solo, plus 4 on hit. Um, but mainly wall standing 2, right? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself with the wall standing 2-4. Wall standing 2. Let's put that on screen. Um, we have wall standing 2. Super, super goaded. Um, first off, I'm going to show you why. This is my primary use of it. We're using 2 into 4 is completely hit confirmable. I repeat that. Completely hit confirmable. I'm going to put it to block all. He's already on block all. So say like I do something that's not natural combo. Like say jab into jab. Not natural. 4, 3, 1 plus 2. He's able to block. While standing 2, 4, you could delay it. And it'll hit confirm. And also my favorite part about it is that if you're too late, he'll, he'll simply won't do it. So you get a free attempt at the hit confirm at no risk. You won't throw it out the high and, and they'll be able to duck because it wasn't natural. You just won't do it or you will hit it. So this is one of my favorite properties about wall standing 2. But after that, you throw it out so much, they don't block, you, you throw it out, you don't hit confirm it. They can start to duck, so that's risky. Don't worry, he has another extension. The OG wall standing 2-1. Um, it's not the greatest because uh, it is natural as well. But on block, it's minus 14 in crouch. There's tons of characters that can launch you for that or just punish you heavily at minus 14 from crouch. So be wary of that mid. Um, throwing that on mid too much. This is actually plus three, so you can spam that. But this one, you don't want to spam too hard. You want to mainly use it to uh, mix up your opponent on this train. Um, also, another great tool of it is that it counter hit launches. Same thing as 4 3 1 plus 2. It's very reminiscent of this 4 3 2 and 4 3 1 plus 2 string, you know? And also on regular hit, um, just solo, again, you get back 3 on Oki. So, an guaranteed the extra 11 damage. So, 27 plus 11, 38 damage. And what's interesting about that, the total damage being 38, is that's more than while standing 2 4 doing 36. So, if you truly want a uh, max damage 14 frame Punisher with Jack, I was thinking this would be the new one, right? But no, in this game, while standing 2 1, back 3 is actually the most damage for a 14 frame Punisher. So, keep in mind for that when using while standing 2, hit confirm, mix ups, punish, counter hit launchers. I mean, you could just throw it into itself, into itself again, you know? And then just eventually counter hit him with the second hit launch. Or just wall splat him with the high. You know. And look at the damage on this by the way. Let's go to wall just to really show you the potential. Same amount of wall. I'm in, a, I'm in your crouch. Like Jack Oki wasn't. Or pressure at the wall pressure wasn't good enough. Hitting you with some down back ones. Eventually you're going to get tired of it. You know what I'm saying. Hit confirm. Boom. Look at this combo. I was slightly messed up. But let's do a, just the easy mode. Back down forward 1-1. One, one, blue upper. Humongous damage. That did what, like, 89 damage? Just B and B. Nothing super, super insane. You go easy mode, do C planter. Get slightly easier damage. Still, still amazing damage. So, yeah, wall standing 2, goaded move. I'm going to put a star next to it just to show how goaded it is. Um, use this move hella. Broken. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, we're going to have wall standing 3. Um, we're going all into the wall standing moves. Wall standing 3... It's basically the same thing as 4-3. Um, I probably should put these next to each other. But you get you get the picture. You can go into Gamma Hell from it by holding down forward. I mean down. Um, it still has the same extensions as 4-3-2. War Rising 3-2. Same thing. And he also has War Rising 3-1 plus 2. So this play is the exact same as 4-3. Except you can do it from Crouch. So I'm not going to go over it too much. Because we already talked about 4-3. And this is pretty much the same thing. And uh, we're also going to put a star next to both of these. Because these are my favorite mids. They're so, so good. 4, 3, star. Wall setting 2, star. Wall setting 3, star. And for the final one, classic basic poke, raw raising 4. Let's put that. Oops. Raw raising standing 4. Now, this is just a good mix-up from Crouch. It's safe. No shenanigans. Chunky damage. No hit confirm needed. Plus 5 on hit. Minus 6 on block. Same as always, you know, just 11 frame mid from crouch. Able to mix up easily with uh, down back 1, full crouch down back 1, you know. Um, one of my favorite moves. This is one of the best things to use when you're mixing up your opponent. You dash up in the face, quick war rising 4, you know. You catch up because you can just dash up, down back 1, dash up, down back 1. Dash up, full crouch down back 1. And throw out the war rising 4. And they're totally unable to, you know, uh, react. So you can really put them in a blender. 
and that'll make your opponent really uh, get flustered. And once you get off them, you know, especially run up like crouching mid, they're like, well, I can't believe I got mixed like that. Let me just mash out, let me keep you out. Um, so that's really great for uh, Oki and not Oki, uh, neutral. And all right, that covers the mids. And for the lows, we got pretty simple. I mean, the lows got heavily nerfed in this game overall, but there's still some solid ones um, that you still need to rep. And I mean, of course, we got the classic down back one, plus one in this game instead of uh, being plus two. So that's a slight nerf. Also a damage nerf going from like, I think it was 14 last game to being 13. So just slight nerf, still 12 frames, still good range. Um, and of course, uh, minus 12 on block. Not minus 13. Couldn't be minus 13. Yeah, minus 12. So pretty safe. Of course, it's one of the key lows with Jack. Everyone knows that. And then, of course, we have full crouch down back one. Now, this string, this new hit, is they changed it a lot. First off, um, it's not safe anymore. It's minus 11. And that might seem really, really bad. I mean, it sucks, but there is some counterplay. Um, 14 damage, so slightly more damage. Plus 3 on hit. Um... But the main thing about the string that you want to use is the extensions. Um, real quick before I get the extensions, yeah, 14 frames, so it is slightly slower. It's not as quick as down back one at 12. It used to be from crouch 12 as well, but now it's 14 from crouch. Still unreactable, just a little bit slower. And new secret buff they gave is that it hits grounded. I'm going to go to the wall and show you. So he's at the wall, ground, and he's able when he's like on the floor, I'm able to hit him on the ground. Before, full crouch down back one not, used to not be able to do that. Now in this game, you're able to do that. That's super huge. So um, you, anytime they're on the floor and don't want to get up into pressure, they have to, or else they'll just take a round hit. So just spam this at the wall until they get up. And then after that, once they get up and block it, you can start throwing out the mid strings that interrupts. Um, none of these are natural counter hit combos, but it just makes it safe. Because look, look at that. You throw this out by itself, it turns into a safe low pretty much because the second hit is a mid. And you're eight, it's minus six. So this right here is very spammable. You can even stay and crouch from it and um, continue like crouching pressure and stuff. And also the best thing is like when they try to jab you, that the highs will just go right under you. Even though you're minus six, the jabs will just go right under you. So that's super, super great. Um, and then, you know, if you want to catch them like applying the pressure or doing some kind of mix up after they block this, like you interrupt the mid they might do since the jabs are not working you can throw out the third hit um and that right there a wall splats um decent damage it is unsafe though at minus 14 so pretty heavily punishable which is kind of fair i mean it's not super launch some characters would be able to launch but if they guess that the whole string right and they blocked the last hit you kind of deserve to get punished you know what i'm saying um but then there's one more mix up you can charge so if they're expecting the last hit, you can just throw this out for an extra 12 points of chip. So if your opponent is being, um, you know, not super aggressive and they're just holding it, this turns into 26 points of damage, this entire string safe, because it's minus six. Because you get the low at 14 points of damage, you throw this out, plus 12, that turns into 26, push back, minus six. So you just went up in there and just mashed on them, you know what I'm saying? And so you keep on spamming that, they're going to be forced to attack and interrupt. Um, but then at that point, you could just let it rip instead of charging it up. So the mix-ups with the string are super, super amazing. So many possibilities. You know, am I gonna, just going to do the first hit? Just going to do the second hit? Am I going to do all three hits? Am I going to do the charge? Or, you know what I'm saying? Am I going to do nothing? So, so good. So yeah, full crouch, down back one, and extensions. I'm going to put a star next to that one. Because this is like the main low they want you to use and annoy people with. Okay, and then I got two more lows. I got the next one. We're going to do down forward four. Now, this low, um, pretty good too. Minus 13. Um, but the range on it is what I really like. And it hits grounded. At some ranges, down back won't hit, won't hit. Or full cross down back won't hit. But this low is has just a little bit more range. A um, little bit more damage. And more importantly, high crush from standing. So anytime I want to do a jab and I want to poke them to evade like high pressure or something, a jab, down back four. You can go jab into full crouch down back one, but that's a little bit, just a tad bit slow, you know. This is like really easy, just one input, high crush. Um, 
Also, the pushback on it is super, super great on block. So sometimes your opponent will try to punish, and it will just completely whiff. Like, look at that pushback. So many times I've seen Wall Rising 4s just completely whiff, and I'm able to punish them. So place this at, like, the tip range, and just watch them block it and whiff their punish. Um, nothing special on counter hit either. Just a decent solid poke. Uh, and now we got moving on to down 4. My last low that I recommend you use for basics. Down 4, minus 4. Um, not the greatest as for pressure, you know. Uh, on block, it's also punishable. But the reason why you want to use this low, even though on paper it seems like really, really bad. Only 10 damage. Uh, minus 4 on hit. Minus 15 on block. Like huge, right? It's because this low tracks. Like it, it pretty much hard tracks. If they're stepping you to your left, they're stepping to your right. Um, down 4 is like a really great tracking option. So... I don't know, I, I feel like that's the, too much nerfs, like too much being minus 15, but it's still a great high crushing tool, decent range, and um, just anytime I'm worried about getting steps, I know I can just throw this out and be have peace of mind, you know? So that's going to cover it for the basic pokes for highs, mids, and lows. Um, let's go over, we got two jab, we got side step two, we got wall, down forward one, forward one, forward forward one, back forward four, forward three, two insections. Wall standing two, wall standing three and two extensions, wall standing four, and then for lows, we got about four basic lows. Down back one, full crouch down back one, down back, oh, I put down forward four, pardon me, down back four, and down four. So yeah, that's going to be it for the uh, high, mids, and low section, and the next section we'll be covering, it will be heat with jack, or heat engagers. All right, guys, now this is going to be the second part of the beginner jack 8 guide and here i'm going to be talking about heat with jack 8. so first off i'm going to be going over um all his heat engagers just so you could know all of them and you can start to implement them into your move list um so for the first one we have back one plus two this is probably his quickest um one of my favorites as well it's 14 frames 28 damage a good chunk of damage um, and, but you have to be worried about throwing out this one because on block, it is minus 19. So super, super punishable. Um, but the pushback on it is pretty, pretty big. So a lot of the times, a person's uh, punish can just go straight under or straight um, with, you know what I'm saying? It's just not enough range. But I'm sure once people really start to lab, they'll find an option to punish this consistently. So beware of just throwing that out. You don't want to throw that move out. Um, but it has great range for whiff punishing. At 14 frames as well, great speed. 14 or 15 frames. From downtown, it's at 15 right there. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for back one plus two, really. 14 frame, you can use it as a punish. You can use it as a whiff punish. Uh, like we talked about earlier, you could do down forward four into back one plus two. So a bunch of good options to use it for, you know. You could also use it off of um, the down back two plus three, right? I believe. That's a hard adjust frame, but you do have 15 frames to attack. So you could do that. So yeah, first one. Forward, one plus two. Next heat engager, we got uh, back two. So back two is pretty good. 27 damage, kind of the same thing. Um, plus five on block, a lot of pushback. This is gonna be a move that's really, really good at the wall. Um, because in neutral, you don't really get to use that plus five as they're like right out of range, you know? I mean, you can maybe dash up jab, but, you know, that dash up takes some of your frame, so you're not really that plus. Probably the safest thing to do here, just a quick dash up jab. Um, but mainly, this move at the wall is really, really good. Let's go ahead and go to the wall. Because now, I'll be able to hit you at plus five, and you'll be stuck right in my face. So, I mean, I can start doing frame traps. I can start doing some lows. I can do anything I want, you know? Um, so, back two is really, really good. Um... Also, let's see what does it do on heat. On heat, um, same thing, just regular run up is two. Always, you know, after heat, do that running up is two. Safe mid check. I don't think they can interrupt or sidestep. And you get a free 14 damage, by the way. Just want to throw that out there. The next one we got back to charge. Now, this is one of my favorite ones um, because, first off, it does mega damage, 40 damage. But the only bad thing is that like, you have to charge it up. Um, but my main thing that I like it for 
is this right here. Look at that. Damage. That was a block, by the way. It did 40% of the damage. And 40% of chargeback, too, is 16 points. So that's like a little mini unblockable, really. Um, that's so much damage for, like, chip. Just a single chip poke, you know? Minus two, so you're actually not plus at the wall or neutral. But the pushback's insane, so it's pretty much pseudo uh, neutral. Um, and of course, if you ever catch someone for some reason, you get like 40 damage. Humongous damage into chip with a 14. That ends up being 54 damage. So that's super, super huge. Um, the tra You have to be worried though, it can be stepped. Sometimes it will catch someone like moving a little bit. But, like I was playing Shadow of Fina earlier and he was stepping me pretty well to the left. So just be wary. Um, just find a good moment where you know your opponents like kind of settle down. They're not mashing. And then just like let it rip into the wall. Well, actually at the wall, I'm tripping. Let's go to the wall. Look, look at this. I, I forgot that this happens. I gotta do this. Pardon me, pardon me. Bro, you're not getting up. Plus five on hit. All right, so I thought it would be minus two, but I remember uh, he kept the wall stun or the wall guard break. Not the wall break. The wall crush in this game where, like, it, they smack you against the wall. Um, I don't know if it has extra chip, but I do know it changes the properties on block to where now it's plus five. So you can actually continue pressure at the wall after that. So that's really, really nice, you know. Um, so that's going to be it for chargeback two. Let's go back to neutral. Next, we got Gamma Hell 4. So now we're going to do the two Gamma Hell heat engagers. This one's really good. 14 frame startups. Now, the frames on this really depend on what you're doing it out of. You know, like, you know, right here, 4 3 on counter is essentially Gamma Hell engager because that's natural combo. Uh, 4 4 1, Gamma Hell 4 is a great way to interrupt them because you're plus 4. And that comes out at 14 frames. So it trades with jab. So this this is uninterruptible. I don't even think you can do down jab against it. Because it'll beat it at 10 frame down jab high crush. Um, so that's really good on block. Being able to just throw that out and force your opponent to duck or something like that. Nine points of chip also. So not even hitting it is giving me reward. Also at plus three. Like Gamma Hall 4, I'm telling y'all, is one of the most spammable jack moves in the entire game. I mean... Uh, this is kind of similar to it. Warzing 2. You can throw out a from crouch. You do it like that. You do it from crouch warzing 3. And one of my favorite things about it is just how far it pushes them towards the wall. Like actually, a matter of fact, I want to go to a different stage just to show you this. So you'll see right here, like, even though it doesn't seem it's super, super rewarding. Because, you know, I mean, 9 points a chip is like, okay. Plus 3 is okay. But look, from, from the beginning of the game, 1, 2... Now we're pretty much at the wall. I mean, three will definitely push you at the wall. So, I mean, just spamming this attack gives you positional advantage as well. You know. So there's so many reasons that you're winning when you land this move on hit or on block that I need y'all to spam this. And, uh, you know, it is a high. That's the one bad thing about it. But that's okay because that's what starts his game plan in this game. You start um, making your opponent want to duck and open up, up to some mids, you know. So, yeah. Oh, so I haven't been riding the heating gauges. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Back to. Back to charge. And then we'll do. Um, Gamma Hell 4. Capital. Because Gamma Hell deserves capital. And then after that, we have Gamma Hell 3 plus 4. Now, this is another special one. Uh, Gamma Hell 3 plus 4. It's basically like a flash or armor move. It's like a weird combination. Um, you mainly you're supposed to use it to catch people interrupting your gamma hell mixes. Like say you want to throw this out, or say you're throwing this out. People can jab interrupt you um, if you're not doing uh, you know gamma hell four or uh, anything like that. So when people are starting to interrupt you, you start to throw this out. Um, and what this move does, it just Armors through anything they're throwing out. And then on hits. Let's see what it does on hits. It's Heat Engager. So you can just continue the pressure from them mashing on you. And some more Gamma Hell mix-ups. And let alone you'll activate Heat, you know. Um, and then in Heat, 
this move turns even better. Oh, we're not that far. In heat, you can make it um, safe by burning your heat. So it is minus 13 on block. Show on 13 here. You have to be wary because no, although no one really punishes it, it's minus 13 on block. But you can ma actually make it plus. So you have a plus frame flash in heat at all times. Like that's pretty crazy. If I if I would say so myself, a plus frame flash. Also, it, it'll hit someone in the back. Like I've been off axis. And it'll just hit someone who sidesteps to my right, or is at my back. Like it's it's a real AOE attack, so it's super super insane. This move is amazing. Why did they give Jack a flash? I don't know, uh, but it serves him well in his Gamma Hell stance. So definitely use Gamma Hell three plus four a ton. Not a ton, just at the right time. You want to use it at the right time because it is punishable. But like I said, when you feel that your opponent's gonna start mashing on you, interrupt him with that. Super super great option. Then after that we have. Uh, just the basic ones. Um, oh, no, no. Um, there's one secret one. Secret Gamma Howl Engager. Um, let me put my opponent in Crouch. And you'll see why I have to put him in Crouch right now. We have uh, down 2 plus 4. This is a unbreakable Crouch throw. Comes out at 12 slash 13 frames. Um, see how just fast it is? 25 damage, unbreakable, and activates heat. Really, really great option. And it's a little bit tricky. Um, you could use that move in a bunch of ways. One of my favorite ways to use it is off of forward 3 plus 4. Because this is... I'm telling you right now, this is truly natural. Here, let me put him on... Just put him on standing. He's on block all. So, I mean, anything that wouldn't be a combo wouldn't land. Let's take like this. Like that. But yeah... When I go into when I hit it and go into stance, I'm plus 15. So you actually have some time to hit confirm it because it's grabs 12. You got three frames of leniency to hit this and be like, oh, let me let me throw out the. Uh, oh, you have to first off commit to entrance, lay it down. But then you let that grab. Oh, wrong one. There's two of them, but we're talking about heating gauges here. So it ends up doing the total 49 damage off of four two plus four. Super, super great addition. Um, I mean, just for the clarification, he has two of the crouch grabs. This one's just more damage, 30 damage instead of 25. And it has better Oki as it leaves him right, right in front of your face, you know? Uh, but this one, you get the full heat engager bar, which is super, super useful. So yeah, definitely uh, do the crouch throw, which is down two plus four. Now we got two more. Now these ones are kind of, these are ju the, um, what do you call it? The uh, general heat engagers. Um, it's going to be just two plus three. So two plus three comes out 16. You're invincible pretty much unless you're trying to armor through another heat smash or um, uh, lows. Like sometimes lows will beat me out, especially if I don't have, have enough frames. But yeah, this move's really good. It's like a pseudo armor move, activates heat, hella range. 12 damage, nothing too crazy, but it's plus two, which is really nice. Um, also on block, what is he doing block? Plus two, plus one actually. So you're plus two or plus one, no matter how that lands. And that's actually huge for Jack. I'm gonna show you why. So let's say I go to a wall, or just anywhere in Jerry, like a breakable wall or something like that. Here, yeah, let's go to a breakable wall just to show the true maximum effect. Now what you wanna do, once you activate your heat, like this, is just spam the shit out of this. Because you'll be plus, and you'll just fucking kill him with your 10 frame heat smash. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I just really want to show you how broken the general uh, heat engager is for Jack. So I'm going to put him standing block first hit. And say they try to attack. They're plus one, 10 frame. Oh, whoops. Well, let me just put you at standing. So yeah, activate heat, and just mash this, totally frame trap into humongous damage. You know, you get a whole combo. Really, really good stuff, you know? So yeah, that's why I, one reason I really like that uh, generic heat, because it just pairs really well with its own heat smash. Whether it be on plus or on, on block or on hit, you know? So yeah, generic, two plus three. 
good for interrupting, good for switching momentum, and a good frame trap. And the next, uh, kind of put a little start to this, 2 plus 3, back back. Now, I saw, because I've been seeing people message me about this, like, uh, how do I do the flex, or how do you cancel it, when you do the generic one, and that's pretty much it. Because sometimes, you might be at a range where you'll just whiff this, and you don't want that to happen. People can whiff punish you. So, if you ever just want to activate heat, but not get whiff punished, that's when you do back back. And that's really, really key to staying alive. And being safe with your heat, you know? So, I mean, it's an option that a lot of people don't even know they have. So, pretty sure that's another generic thing. So, make sure to take advantage of that. Not making uh, yourself whiff. Throw out that backpack. But yeah, that's going to cover it for my heat engagers. Um, the next, let's just talk about his heat smash. We talked about it a little bit already. But let me just cover the heat smash. Let's look at this. 10 frames. It does 52 damage. And not only that, as we showed you earlier, it activates wall gimmicks, so like any balcony break, any wall break, any uh, wall bounce, like this one, it activates for full combo damage. Like, I mean, I'm just showing some of y'all pretty basic right there. Um, so at 10 frames, the range on it as well is insane. I mean, let me see right here. I think it, it definitely has more range than 4-2 by itself. Like, it's supposed to be 4-2, but it's like 4-2 on steroids. Like, look at the range, dude. So, so good. And then one more key thing I want to tell you about this move right here is that you can do it from crouch. If you're in crouch, you can press 2 plus 3, and you have a 10-frame heat smash. So, say you block, like, a minus 10 low. Like, say, uh, I don't know any minus 10 lows in this game yet, but, like, Julia, not Julia, Josie, if she hits you with down 4... You were minus 10, so it was like pseudo safe. All you could get is like a dick jab, if you even had a dick jab. You know, Jack, I don't even have a dick jab. And crouch down one comes out, and down two is 11, right? So it's pretty much safe. But now, if, you know, a character was to do that on me, at minus 10, I could punish you. That's insane. So at the wall, imagine getting that punish on a super safe low. You block the low from crouch, boom. Very, very sick, you know? Also, it's just useful like um, for situations when people put you at a disadvantage in crouch, like they're applying their own pressure. At any time, you have a 10 frame heat smash, and that kind of messes with their head because Jack's not supposed to have something like that. He's not supposed to have a down jab while he's in crouch. He has a down two, which is 11. So this opens them up to a whole new like um, way of defending. They have to defend against you in crouch. So yeah, heat smash, one of the best in this game, honestly. Um, super mega damage. One more thing before I get, I mean, try to remember everything I can about the heat smash is that it becomes natural combo on running two. So running two becomes insane when you have heat. You know, if it lands, running two will kill you. So like you hit it at a wall. Look at the damage. I mean, 63 damage. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm starting the combo right now. Almost at the wall, 94. Super, super, super good uh, combo damage right there. Um, but I think that's the only other way you can get four, 2 plus 3 guaranteed like that. So I think that's going to cover it for heat. We went over all the heat engagers. We went over the heat smashes. Um, and of course, you know, when you're in heat, you get the heat engagers to be uh, increased. So these turn into a launcher, you know. Um, Gamma Hell 4 turns into a launcher. Let's see what else turns into a launcher. Um, back 2 turns into a launcher. The only one that doesn't turn into a launcher is back 1 plus 2. You have to do blue up there. So just keep that in mind for all your heat engager, your heat um, engagers when you use them in heat. I've had that happen a lot of times. So I'll hit back 1 plus 2 and I try to do back 3-2 at the wall or something. It's still going to drop. You have to get one unscaled hit. And that kind of balances it out because counter hit, down forward 4, might be too broken. You know? If that gave a full combo, uh, it just gives unscaled hit. So it's gonna look more something like this. So 59 damage, pretty nice chunk for a 15 frame mid that's safe, you know? So yeah, that's gonna cover it for our heat, guys. Um, and we'll be see if we move on to the next section. All right, guys, we're here with the third section of the video and we're gonna be going over Gamma Hell Basics. Now, Gamma Hell stance is Jack 8's new stance in this game. Um, 
And at first, it could seem pretty daunting. There's a whole lot of new options, and I'm not sh you you know you might not be too sure on what they all might do. But I'm just gonna give you the basic ones. I'm not gonna be going ever over every single option. Um, but I'm gonna go over first off in no heat how you're supposed to use Gamma Howl. So first off, no heat. Um, it's definitely weak. So I'm just gonna put that right here. It's not super super amazing, but you can definitely be very annoying with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, no heat, annoying. Because there's no way you could really open them up besides like the throw if they don't break one plus two. Um, but you really want to use first is like Gamma Hell 4. Gamma Hell 4. Mainly because let me just put them on block all. That's the only way you're going to be get your opponents to start ducking. There's no lows or super powerful things for them to duck. You know, um, in Gamma Hell. So you just want to be using this. You get your position advantage, like we were talking about earlier. You get your plus. You get your nine points of chip. So you you know you're starting to take out the health bar slowly but surely. You know. Um, and your plus three, so you can keep on continuing your pressure. So that's how you stay in Gamma Hell. You enforce your pressure with Gamma Hell. It also comes out super fast where they can't really interrupt. Like um, even after a four forward one, your plus four into the 14 frame, it trades with 10. Can't interrupt there. Here it looks like you're able to interrupt by uh that's 14 you're minus three so 17 frames actually but you can use a bubble burst here um four three natural gamma out forward four four two one gamma out four so that's the high and that's like the chip that you're gonna want to throw out and then once they start to duck we'll put it on crouch that's when you throw out this mid or not that mid this mid this one's uh minus 10 on block but you do get the follow-up. You can go for the blue upper. You can go for uh, seed planter. You can go for down back two. Go for anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, only thing is that a uh, slight risk at minus 10. But honestly, it's, it's not that super, pu not that punishable. Pretty much negligible. I mean, unless you're doing like the Jack Mirror. And he has his own heat smash. <laughs> but um, yeah, super uh, good basic mid high mix up there am i gonna push you to the wall am i gonna be p plus three and chip you with gamma hell four and once you eventually get tired of that are you gonna duck and then the third option all right gamma hell four the third option is gonna be um gamma hell one the third option is gonna be gamma hell three plus four and the reason why i'm gonna make this your third option is because sometimes you'll get sidestepped or mashed or duck jabbed or anything like that when uh, going around and heat, throwing out these moves and all that. Um, say like after like this one too. The Gamma Hell 3 plus 4 completely negates all of that like we talked about earlier. It's like a Yoshi Flash. Um, activates heat. And um, you're able to just continue your pressure and eat their own uh, pressure. So like it's just super, super good. And so between these three pokes, Gamma Hell 4, Gamma Hell 1, and Gamma Hell 3 plus 4. You could really make Gamma Hell stance with no heat super, super good. Um, he has some other options, but uh, those are the basics that you're going to want in neutral in Gamma Hell. And then next, we're going to be talking about Gamma Hell in heat. In heat. Pause. Now, Gamma Hell 4 in heat is not annoying, but it is deadly. All caps deadly um, and the reason why is because now instead of just getting a little small you know um, oh he's ducking me hold on small plus nine ch uh, damage and plus three chip we're gonna have access to the guard break plus 11 guard break and if you have enough heat left over in your bar you could hit him with your heat smash it is slightly scale damage, um, but still really, really good, you know? S slightly scale down since the guard break. And of course, as we all know, we showed you early with the heat smashes. Amazing damage. Just insane damage. Any of the wall breaks. So, so deadly. I mean, all of a guard break, by the way. Um, but this high is interruptible. It's a little bit slow at 20 frames. Um, and then we're supposed to mix up. Gamma Hell 4. Guard break. 
Whoops. I mean, Gamma Hout, too. I'm just going to put GB for Guard Break. So that's going to be your high that you're going to start opening up your opponents with. And then next, we're going to be talking about Gamma Hout 1 in Heat. Gamma Hout 1 in Heat, we went over it earlier. It gives you the follow-up. Um, minus 10. Um, tracking as well. You know, so solid mid to catch him. To crouching. But if I'm in Heat... Now this move turns into a whole launcher. It does a tornado spin immediately, so it's not like a regular launcher. It's a slightly worse launcher, but still launcher nonetheless. With Jack, you can still carry him to the wall right here, especially. Something like that, you know. Um, and not only that, on block, it becomes safe. So we're going to make them stand block. So I went from minus 10 to minus 6. That's pretty good. And also, it went from no chip... Like right here, minus 10, no chip. It goes, uh, it activates chip now. So even if they block it, you still get a little something, you know, for your, your troubles. You get eight points of damage. Um, the only thing about it though, is that when you're in heat, it does use some of your heat bar. It's one of those moves, like you can't use it infinitely. Same thing as like uh, two. Two looks like it takes out a lot more your heat, your heat bar, but this one still takes out a little bit, you know? And you can spam it like that. So Gamma Hot 1, safe launcher. I'm just going to put a launch. We're going to go over it in heat. Oh, money sign. Um, again, like we talked about earlier, this turns into a full launcher. So it turned, it really turned, it really starts to act like Flash, you know, being an, uh, a launcher and all that. Oh, here, let me just make them standing. So yeah, I mean, in heat, this also turns into a launch. Also, um, it does chip, I'm sure. And then, um, so yeah, um, between all of these options, the Gamma Hall 2, Gamma Hall 1, Gamma Hall 3 plus 4, you're going to be really, really solid in heat. And of course, you know, in heat, you could also add the Gamma Hall 4 if you want to catch them interrupting as well. Another way that launches um, besides that, you know, besides uh, the 3 plus 4 in heat. So we'll, just go, we'll go ahead and add that into the heat, the Gamma Hall 4 as well. launch so i mean as you can see on the list just everything turns into a menace you got the guard break you got all the different launchers you know so you're gonna mainly want to use all these different options in heat these are the core options uh it's not all of them but you don't need all of them you just need these basic ones so that's gonna cover the gamma how basics guide um if you have any more questions feel free to let me know in the comments if i missed over anything or if i feel like i got something incorrect please let me know but yeah guys that's gonna cover it now for the jack 8 basic guide i hope you take all this info and implement it in your own gameplay um but yeah that'll be it guys peace out thanks for watching see you next time